want to introduce us? We're oh. live. Oh, we're live. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to another episode of Between Two Boobs. We are currently setting up the other part that we need to right now, but uh, in today's discussion, we will be talking about why fitting matters. Soon. <laughs> Soon. Okay, there we go. Hi, ladies. Okay. <laughs> So what we were doing is we were just getting the secondary screen up so we can see your comments and questions. Uh, we just wanted to say hello. Um, and if you have questions that come up over this process, definitely drop them in the chat. We'll be able to see them, answer them. Um, yeah, so as Miss Haley here has said, we're gonna be talking about breast form fitting. As, as well as something that is very important to the breast form store is our certifications and our background. A uh, little bit of company history here is breast form store was founded in 1993. So we're 29 years old and we have certifications. We are the only retailer that is dedicated to the cross-dressing, transgender, um, gender fluid and drag queen communities that offers certified breast form fitters. Um, so we're going to kind of explain what that means and why it matters. Um, and we have all been certified as fitters since the company started. So that's been something that's been very important to us. Uh, so Haley, you've been with the breast form store for Almost a year now. Almost a year, yeah. Um, and you actually just recently did your certification. Mm -hmm. So yes. that's a little bit of a new experience for you. What <laughs> What is like getting certified? What did you learn? I learned a lot. So basically, we get certified through um, a post mastectomy based company. Um, and uh, we learn a lot about kind of um, how to fit breast forms to the body. Um, they obviously, so they specialize in post mastectomy, so someone who's um, gotten surgery to have their breasts removed and need to have the prosthesis. Um, and so we learned a lot about um, kind of what goes into getting a breast form to fit a person's body depending on kind of what they have going on on their chest. So it's kind of like figuring out what's how much like muscle or mm -hmm. tissue is there yeah. or I guess lack thereof yeah exactly exactly particularly for post mastectomy women they usually have more of a lack thereof <laughs> <laughs> so it so does that mean that you're learning like how to make things match or yeah exactly like I mean for example if they've had one removed you need to try and match it to the other one so it's learning a lot about how different breast forms will have different shapes to them they're not all shaped the same way not only in the back but also in the front you can have kind of a more full cup fill you can have more of a average or shallow and so that's also important for determining what that person is going to need and what they're going to want because if they've had both of the breasts removed and they get to kind of just they don't need to match the other side they can do whatever they want then they can go for a shape that they maybe didn't have before and have desired and they can kind of find what works for them or choose your own how fun yeah <laughs> <laughs> so I guess also with that is, is there like a lot of bra fitting that goes along with post mastectomy as well? Or do yeah. women know their bra size and you just go with that? <laughs> no one knows their bra size. <laughs> no one. <laughs> I honestly, I didn't even really, I was wearing, turns out I was wearing the right bra before I came here, but I didn't know why I was wearing the right bra. <laughs> now I know why. But like people like were not really taught growing up what bra fitting is or how to do it so it is like you know part of the certification process is understanding what bra fitting really means why it matters why getting the right bra size matters because it does <laughs> and so getting the right bra size um and having that work with breast forms like are you given any sort of training in terms of like I don't know, like how breast forms and bras go together or are they super separate? No, I'm 
mean, you definitely want the bra that works with the breast form, right? Like, we want to make sure that they're working together, cohesively. Okay. Yeah. And are there certain things, like, a post-mastectomy woman would be interested in that would be different than someone who is full-time living in their feminine lifestyle or someone who is, you know cross-dressing on the weekends like mm -hmm. do they have different needs yeah I mean depending on how much you wear it so com comfort's gonna be a thing like for sometimes for people who are wearing their breast form full-time every day they want something that's going to feel good against their body other and like they're always gonna be wearing the bra it doesn't really matter what it looks like as much so like visual appeal is going to be different um, but I do know that like finding something that feels good against their body is important as opposed to someone who does it more like every now and then. Okay. So like you see a lot of post mastectomy breast forms are like lightweight and mm -hmm. extra lightweight and flowable. And this one does things for hot flashes. Like <laughs> why, why don't you see that for trans women? Like, yeah. So like. The reason that like post mastectomy forms will have a lighter weight has to do with if the woman has like osteoporosis or something like that where they like physically medically need it to be lighter or else it could hurt their body to have that natural weight. Okay. Um, but generally speaking, unless they're a lightweight form, they're like a naturally weighted silicone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's like a medical necessity. Yeah, exactly. Um, very cool. And out of curiosity, like how, how quickly do post mastectomy women wear a silicone breast form? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm asking I mean, all the hard questions. <laughs> well, it's like technically you can start wearing a form after like a couple months, technically, but that's not like it's a surgery site like do you really want to be putting something right over a surgery site you can be kind of swollen for a while as well like if you're getting fitted for a breast form and you've still got swelling because there's still tissue that's healing then you have issues with well you go from this curvy to much more flattened later after all that mm -hmm. swelling goes down and then you've got the wrong concavity in the back so generally we like to wait a little bit longer than that um, Give you time to heal. <laughs> <laughs> so how does that all translate into what we do with the breast form store? Well, it's it's similar. I mean, generally like the <laughs> the math that's involved that we use, like if you ever give us a call and we're helping you with breast form fittings, we're gonna be asking you for your underbust measurement and your overbust measurement because no matter what the body type is, those measurements are what we use to try and help you determine your bra band size and your kind of how much tissue and pec muscle we're working with on the chest so that we know should we be putting you in a flat back or a semi-concave back or a fully concave back. Okay, so there there is overlap. Yes, definitely. Very cool. Yes. Uh, before we transition into some other stuff, if anyone's got some post mastectomy questions, you can definitely drop them and we'll address them a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, do you have questions for me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess since we were just talking about how it all relates to um, post mastectomy and how it relates to the assigned male at birth body. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to start, I'll just talk quickly on something that you often see and occasionally girls will ask and that's why fitting charts are different between two companies. Mm -hmm. So if you go to a post mastectomy website and you are looking at Emoda, Emoina, I don't know which one's right. <laughs> if you're looking at their fitting chart and it's a website dedicated to post mastectomy women, their fitting information is different than what we say at the breast form store. Mm -hmm. And it's a little confusing because their fitting chart looks the same, but our numbers are different. So why is the breast form store different? Well, that's because we are doing it for a different body type. So. A post mastectomy woman generally has had a more severe surgery and she tends to be flatter on her chest wall 
than someone who has not gone through a post has not gone through a mastectomy. So someone who is assigned male at birth or even someone who's assigned female at birth and just wants to be a little bit bustier, you have more natural tissue on your chest wall than that woman who has gone through that surgery. So she's she tends to be flat, like rib cage flat. It can even like get into the muscle there. Um, whereas someone who hasn't gone through that has a little bit more. So it actually changes how it fits in the bra mm -hmm. because your own tissue is projecting it further. So our fitting chart has been modified for someone who has that muscle and that, that tissue naturally on their body. Um, not to say that it, we're doing it because we assume you're naturally a double D or anything, but because it's not for a post-surgery purpose, we've adjusted it to guarantee an accurate fit with your bras or for your body size. Okay, so you did all the testing for getting that fitting chart? So this is actually something that I was taught when I started a million years ago with the breast form store, um, was that was something that was designed after lots and lots of trial and error through our certified fitters. Um, so way back when the company started, it was a lot of in-person testing. How is it different on, uh, at the time our founder, Victor, how is it fitting differently on Victor? How, how is it working with different body types? A lot of our in-person fittings, a lot of customer feedback helped us really determine that along with a lot of correspondence with the manufacturers and really tailoring our fitting. Um, definitely everything you do at the breast, and we do at the breast form store, every fitting chart you see is custom built to that product. There's nothing generic saying a size seven is always this because it's not. Mm -hmm. Everything's been fine tuned and tailored and it's through that in-person experience of putting it on, testing, seeing how it fits, adjusting to get the most accurate fit. Okay. So that's why a gold seals fitting chart is not going to be the same as an amelux fitting chart. And even within the gold seal, like if you yeah. take a look at the gold seal triangle, its fitting chart is different than the gold seal classic because it's a different shape. Mm -hmm. Just like you were talking about different breast shapes, mm -hmm. well, other dimensions have changed to that breast form. That breast form, even though they can both be called a size 7, the triangle actually fits smaller than the classic because of how it fits to the body. Mm -hmm. So that's why that fitting chart is different and why it's always so important to take a look at that. Yeah, absolutely. And so all of our fitting charts, they intersect the bra band size with the cup size. So asking for, say I want to be a double D, can I just be a double D? <laughs> <laughs> Well, definitely. It can be any cup size you want. That's the blessing of it. Um, so the way it works is cup size is all about being proportionate to the body. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why when you look at a girl who's five foot nothing, maybe a hundred pounds, and she's got double D's, she's got double D's and you can see it. But you take a girl who's, you know, six foot two and like say 170 pounds, she's also got double D's. Both girls look like they have double D's because they do, mm -hmm. but that taller girl, her body is physically bigger in other ways. She's taller in height, her rib cage is bigger, proportions, things like that. She carries more weight on her because she has a bigger frame. Mm -hmm. Her breast is actually physically larger. No. So that's why like your 38 double D and your 44 double D, if you put the two bras side by side, mm -hmm. they look really different, mm -hmm. but on the body, they both look yeah yeah exactly exactly it's it's a difficult <laughs> concept when you're just starting out like i started about a year ago and this was all brand new information to me <laughs> well especially if you're like going shopping and you're looking around and you're like i i don't understand why these two bras are exactly the same but this one is way bigger mm -hmm. that is because it is meant for a larger rib cage size it's meant for a larger frame size and it's mm -hmm. all about that proportionate mm -hmm. kind of sizing and so for the sizing that we use we use north american right is there a difference is there more than one type so yes <laughs> if you've ever been shopping and you've seen like calvin klein does it if you're ever in um macy's and you're in the lingerie section and you look at the little card and there's like seven different bra sizes and you're like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> that is because bra sizing is different all over the world. Um, so here in the US, Canada, UK, 
we have kind of an imperial sort of measurement. It looks like inches, it's not, but it, it's kind of based on inches. So that's your 34, your 36, your 38. Mm -hmm. um, that is a certain measurement. Mm -hmm. Europe has a different measurement where it's sort of in centimeters, but not. So you'll see like 90, 95, 105. Mm -hmm. And then um, France uses similar ones. You might see like a 95 and then an 80 on the same bra bra card and you're like I, why are they why are they different why is france different um and then even more you'll see one more for australia and it'll be like size 10. <laughs> you, it's very confusing it's all because each region does a slightly different way of displaying how the bra sizes are mm -hmm. sometimes it's a difference of imperial and metric um, but it's also the difference of that adding measurements to your underbust because it's not just what you measure because that mm -hmm. would make life easy. That would be too um, easy. <laughs> the exception is France specifically because France actually has laws governing how clothing can be labeled. So they have very specific regulations. So their sizing is based on the physical measurements of the garment itself, um, which is why you'll see 90 to 105 mm -hmm. on a bra size all the exact same bra size it's just region based mm -hmm. um, what we do here in the US is your standard North American bra sizing that's the same that you'll find with Wacol, Playtex, Victoria's Secret, Fruit of the Loom uh, as well as the brands that we work with Elegant Moments, Amona, uh, Nearly Me, Transform all those bras use standard North American bra sizing mm -hmm. um, there's a couple, Lane Bryant and Torrid both use the same sizing as well. It's mm -hmm. a, the most common sizing you'll find in North America. Mm -hmm. um, and that is based on adding measurements to your rib cage because it's not based on your rib cage. Mm -hmm. Just to keep things confusing. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Wouldn't life be easier if we could just, that's the number and that's the number you wear. No, no. Couldn't be that easy. Couldn't. No. <laughs> Well, that's actually because your bra band size isn't based on this under bust measurement. Mm -hmm. um, and that is why it's so different when it comes to doing breast form fitting for the assigned male at birth body or for a post mastectomy woman is it is meant to be taken typically at your armpit level. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is if you don't have breast tissue that is pushing your chest wall up in this spot, mm -hmm. you can't get an accurate measurement. Mm -hmm. So that's why that science comes in of adding measurements to your under bust is to, um, is to, what's the word? Compensate. Mm -hmm. Compensate for the miss missing tissue that is not naturally on the chest wall. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have that plus four, plus five, depending on what you measure, to mm -hmm. get to the accurate bra sizing. Mm -hmm. And we do this for post mastectomy women as well because that's how, again, we figure out what you should be after you've lost the breast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into this. <laughs> like. We really appreciate that people call and email and ask us about fitting because we are much happier to help you get the right fit than to just guess. <laughs> it is easier once you've at least had your first breast form if you know what works for you then that's a great basis because then you at least have a starting point but especially when you're getting your first pair of forms like it's good to talk to someone and make sure you're getting what's right for your body. Yeah and you have to keep in mind that no one like there's no master class there's no ted talk for women <laughs> that everyone gets sat down at age 13 and you're explained this is how bra sizing works wouldn't that be yeah. nice oh my goodness <laughs> uh, no it, it's the exact same experience that trans women cross-dressers go through where we all fumble fumble through mm -hmm. um, some of us are lucky and find the right size at an earlier age others will be will find you know, a fitter and go through that experience a little sooner in life. Mm -hmm. um, but most women, until they've been fit properly, are wearing the wrong size bra because they've gone with something that they think fits right. Mm -hmm. So that's when, like, there are telltale signs that your bra doesn't fit right. If mm -hmm. you are showing any sign that you've been wearing a bra, um, your shoulder straps slide down, you've got marks on your shoulders, there's red marks on your rib cage. Anything like that means that the bra doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. 
And most women just assume that it's supposed to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think that's true for a lot of our clients as well is, you know, you've, you've grabbed a bra, it's super cute, you love wearing it, and yeah, it's really snug, and oh, I wish it didn't leave marks, but it, it feels good because it's tight and it's supportive, and I, mm -hmm. I think this is what it's supposed to feel like, mm -hmm. um, especially if you've had a partner who doesn't have a bra that fits properly. Mm -hmm. You assume that's the way it should be, but it's not. Um, definitely your bra should feel comfortable, and it should never leave any signs on your body that you've been wearing it. Mm -hmm. Yes. That would be, I mean, there's also other things to wearing the wrong bra size as well. It's gonna put the cups on your chest in the wrong place. If you're wearing a bra that's too small, if it's meant for a smaller body, all of the bra has been shrunk. And therefore it's going to be too narrow in your chest as opposed to being on your chest where it's supposed to be. So that's something that the Breast Form Store has figured out in our almost 30 years of being in business and why the Breast Form Store puts so much emphasis on getting your right bra size is when we're looking to feminize and soften the, the assigned male at birth body, something like that is actually really critical because if your bra, your bra is supporting your breast forms and your breast forms are so close on that front of your chest wall, your breast tissue from your breast forms, that appearance, is going to be in the wrong spot mm -hmm. because that's not where the breast tissue would have naturally developed. And what ends up happening in that situation is rather than looking more feminine, you look much more masculine because your body all of a sudden looks broader, it looks wider, it looks rounder, and all the benefits of looking more feminine kind of go out the window because you've just added so much width to your body mm -hmm. by placing the breast forms too close together. Yeah. Whereas same breast forms, same bra, different size, you go from looking broader to looking a lot more feminine, more mm -hmm. natural, and it's it makes a huge difference. And that's been through lots and lots of work that we've done here. Um, definitely, it is something that does make a huge difference in terms of that right bra size can change mm -hmm. what you're wearing for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. And then what about, what are the benefits of finding a breast form with the right level of concavity for your chest? So that is something that the biggest benefit is definitely when it comes to attaching the breast forms to the body. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have a breast form that's super flat in the back, mm -hmm. um, great, <laughs> it means you're gonna have <laughs> lots of projection off the body. But if you have naturally developed breast tissue, it's like putting a book on a basketball. So here's, here's our basketball, here's our book. See how these edges are not curving to the breast form, but kind of <laughs> pulling away? You've got all that space that is not doing anything. Mm -hmm. And that's fine if you always wanna wear them in a bra and you're not worried about that. But if you're wanting to attach and go braless and have that experience, mm -hmm. what's gonna end up happening is the breast form is going to fight against your body mm -hmm. because it wants to stay in its shape and your body wants to stay in its shape. So it's going to try and pull away. Mm -hmm. So if you're attaching and going braless and you should be in something that is for a more developed chest and your breast form is really flat, it creates this tug of war and eventually the breast form is going to win. <laughs> um, so that's why that side of things is really important. Now you can swing too far the other direction as well is if you go with a breast form that is too concave and you need a flat breast form because you don't have a lot of pec muscle or breast tissue naturally developed what can end up happening is there will be a little air bubble between you and the breast form. So big benefit, big drawback of that is you're not feeling the full experience of it on your chest wall because there's this little air pocket. Mm -hmm. Worst case scenario, someone comes up and gives you a hug and now your breasts have parted and that's <laughs> not cute. <laughs> so in that, and to that same extent, if you're attaching and going braless, what can happen is it will kind of collapse a little bit because you're using that pressure to push it against the chest. Mm -hmm. um, definitely a concave breast form tends to be a little bit more pliable mm -hmm. 
than a full breast form, a flat back breast form. So it's not gonna create as much of a tug of war, but it's not gonna look as good. Mm -hmm. So that's why we always go through those processes. And it just means that, you know, even if you are wearing it with a bra, it means that the breast form is not gonna pull away from your body and it's going to look way more seamless. Mm -hmm. So that, that's why we go through those things is to make sure that it creates as good of a look as possible. Yeah, exactly. And again, that's why we ask for those measurements when you go through fittings so that we can try and find out what we're working with. Yeah. What, are you, what are you gonna need? And you know, like even sometimes the breast form that you have your eye on isn't going to be compatible with your chest and that happens, yeah. <laughs> basically. But I mean, do you wanna spend you know $500 on a pair of breast forms only to have them not work for you? No, that's why we'd rather try and help you find something that's gonna work for you. Yeah, and that's one of the things, is everything we do as the breast form store is to make sure that it is working specifically to look good on that assigned male at birth body so that it is always flattering. Mm -hmm. That is our biggest thing is at the end of the day, when you choose to make a purchase with us, we want you to feel satisfied. We want you to feel happy. Ultimately, we want you to feel beautiful when you're wearing it. Mm -hmm. And if something about that fit isn't right, well, we want to make sure that we can arm you with the information to make the right choice before you make that purchase so you can get the best fit possible. Yes, So <laughs> That's what we do. That's what yeah. we do. It's why we have the fitters here. It's why we, you have someone to talk to when you don't know. Yeah, and that's exactly what our business is based on is having someone knowledgeable on the other side. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely the early 90s. Uh, even the early 2000s, there wasn't someone you could call and talk to. It was a very, like, shopping online was still kind of a weird thing to do. It was mm -hmm. very challenging. I mean, we were still using those Sears catalogs, right? <laughs> so it was, it was different because with mail order, okay, well, maybe I'll write a letter and I'll get a reply with the information and hopefully the stock's still available. Mm -hmm. But it's completely different to be able to talk and pick up the phone or send an email and ask questions and be like, hey, I don't understand what this work, how this works or will it work for me? And get someone who's not there trying to sell you something on the other side, but to actually give you information. Yeah. So that is something important to know. We are not salespeople. <laughs> I would never sign up for a sales job. That is not my personality. <laughs> I can't, do. <laughs> I can't do sales like if hmm, we are never recommending something to you based on the price that would not it's not I don't have it in me <laughs> like yeah. we're trying like we're here to educate you and to give you like a good recommendation yeah at the end of the day it's about making sure that whatever you go with is the right choice for you and what you're looking for um, we have been known to recommend someone to a different retailer if we think that their product will be better for them mm -hmm. because our goal is to make sure, again, that you feel beautiful every step of the way. Mm -hmm. um, and that's also why we do our best to make sure that we're educating you and getting the right bra size and things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then definitely in terms of when we talk about certified breast form fitters, as, mm -hmm. as Haley explained, like we go through a process. Um, so Haley, myself, uh, Dahlia downstairs in shipping, we've all gone through our certifications. So every girl here at the breast form store that you can call and speak to is certified. It does mean that we have been certified for post mastectomy. Um, it also means that we've gone through extensive training with the breast form store to really fine tune and fit for the assigned male at birth body to really help find that way to feminize and soften your body and give you something that will look good whether you want to be an A as an awesome or a double D like Dolly Parton. <laughs> like, no matter what cup size you want to be our goal is to make sure that we're helping you create that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so we, there. we do. So, um, are you able to show the edges on Aphrodite? So, we don't have any product right in front of us because we're upstairs in the office at the moment, mm -hmm. but we can 
we'll do a little bit of a product video maybe a little later. Mm -hmm. um, but Aphrodite is designed with a vanishing edge mm -hmm. to it. So it is designed to blend into the skin. Mm -hmm. um, nice thing about it is it's makeup safe. Mm -hmm. So it is something that you can blend it further with a little bit of makeup. Mm -hmm. um, and then did you want to talk a little bit about the skin tones? Yeah, so we so we have the three different skin tones. Um, so and color options for brown. So like, if you're a more tan color, we do get a lot of questions. If I'm more tan, which one should I do? Should I do the vanilla or the caramel? So the vanilla is a really good encompassing kind of medium, generally Caucasian skin tone kind of color. Um, so we find that it does work for tan people and it does work for pale people. An example of both of those is me and Eden. <laughs> um, Eden's a tan, I'm a pale. <laughs> um, it does work really well for Asian skin tones as well. Yes. Because it is kind of an all-encompassing, whether you're a pink undertone or a yellow or a brown undertone, like it is a fully encompassing, softer color. Yes. And then the caramel color, I mean, caramel is honestly the color of caramel. Like if you see a caramel sauce, that's the color that it is. So if, you, if you're in store and you see some caramel and you want to get a good skin tone match, just hold it up. Um, yeah, it, it was originally designed for those who are Hispanic or Latin yes. in origin. So it is a quite a deep color to it. Mm -hmm. um, so it does look really, really good. Um, I myself, I'm American Indian. So in, at least in part. Um, and I would not wear the caramel even when I am at my fullest, darkest, tannest mm -hmm. because it is quite a rich color. Yeah, it's a different kind of like tone as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's got quite a bit of depth to it for yes. sure. Yeah. Oh, we got another. And then the last skin tone is chocolate, which is literally like a milk chocolate color. So yeah. it's, it's best for um, East Asian color, skin tone colors where it's really, really deep. Mm -hmm. um, black and African skin tones where again you've got that really really beautiful rich deep chocolate color mm -hmm. that's where your chocolate is your home run. Yes. Yeah. And then we have another one. Is there any way to repose? Okay so I have a pair of Athena and Jolie pads. Both are losing sticky and the edges are bent. Is there any way to recover the glue or do I need new ones? Okay. So Here's a cool thing about the Divine Collection products is they are sticky all the way through. Mm -hmm. So not that I'm saying you should do this, but in theory, if you cut it in half, it's sticky all the way through because it's actually the exposed silicone that makes that product. Um, so to that extent, it's not like the adhesive can wear out or come off, but it can get dirty over time, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So what's the best way to clean something like that? Like how, how do you rejuvenate? Yeah, so washing your breast forms, first of all, after every use is ideal. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't get build up. Um, but for example, if you, so we have breast form wash on our website and we know that that one works amazing. Um, but other stores or other soaps that you find in store that are like non-moisturizing soaps are also good. You want non-moisturizing so that there's no um, kind of film left over top of it. But if you give your best form a good wash with the correct soap, and then you let it air dry, don't touch it with a towel. <laughs> a towel will leave tiny little fibers all over it, so we don't like that. Um, but if you give it a good wash and you um, let it air dry, that stickiness will be revived. If you're having any issues with the vanishing edges curling, because they're tapered edges, they're very thin, they're prone to curling, this is something that we see a lot. Um, you can put some rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip or a cotton swab and you can kind of glide it along those edges and help smooth them out and that is very effective. I do find that that is the easiest way. Now can yeah. I, could you use hand soap to clean your Aphrodite or your Jolie to, to make it washable again? I mean most hand soaps have moisturizing ingredients in them. Because it's meant for skin. Because it's meant for skin, yeah. That's what I would say is hand soaps in the mo like even more so than body soaps are gonna have moisturizing ingredients in them. So okay. So would recommend. They also tend to be not the most 
mild ones. Like hand soaps are not often the most mild. They're, they're usually, usually yeah. like perfumed or something. Yeah. Which would leave another layer too. Yeah. Because you've got like an oil or something in there. Yes, exactly. So stay away from hand soap. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely like make sure that you've done a really good job removing any adhesive that you've used. If you've used Hollister or mm -hmm. um, the Divine Adhesive um, Secure so like make sure you've removed that. Mm -hmm wash it really well. Mm -hmm. um, one thing you can do as well is give it a quick wipe down with a rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol after you've used your remover, then give it a wash because it'll, again, it'll lift any residue that's there. So mm -hmm. you'll have a really, really good clean. Mm -hmm. Let air dry. Um, put it in the box when you're air drying if you can, like flip that cradle upside down and lay it in the cradle just so that it's being protected and there's like no air particles floating around that mm -hmm. could you know drop some dust on it so you mm -hmm. get a really really good clean until you're ready to wear them next yeah. so you've already answered that one question about can you wipe down a bath with alcohol <laughs> yes you can um, um okay so if i wear aphrodite with a cami or a tube top will the edges be detectable i mean comes down to the cut of the top, right? Yeah, it comes down to the cut of the top. It comes down to um, how well you've kind of positioned it on your body to make it as vanishing as possible and blended it in. Because, um, I mean, yeah. it's not what... The Aphrodite breast forms and everything from Divine Collection, it's not like... Um, not like a traditional medical breast form that you find from from the re like Amona that we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. It is like a special effects, like a movie style prosthetic. Like it's super high end special effects. So it's meant to look good if someone does see it. Mm -hmm. um, so like it's designed for looking good naked. It's designed for making you look and feel beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, whether you're showing off or you're wearing it with clothing. Mm -hmm. So it is something that if someone did see it, it's not gonna be like, oh, that's really shiny or that's not a part of you. It's mm -hmm. meant to look like that. Mm -hmm. um, so if someone did see it, that's, that's kind of why you're wearing it is because it'll still look good. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So uh, yeah, but yeah, will you see the edges like period? Um, it, yeah, it'll come down to the, the cut of the top as well. So, yeah. yeah, but definitely it's something that is designed to look good and if you're using a little bit of makeup or anything, it'll really transition nicely so it's not noticeable. Mm -hmm. um, and to that extent, like just touching back, gonna call this back a little bit in terms of our certifications again, um, we, as we were talking about, we have been certified dealing with post mastectomy, which means that the breast form store has always worked with really trusted manufacturers. Um, we've always worked with the biggest players when it comes to silicone breast worms. We've worked with nearly, working with nearly me, Amona, American Breast Care, True Life. Like we've worked with all the big post mastectomy brands. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we've had them just, we've specially made breast forms with them, some of those brands so that we know that they are being made in the highest caliber, highest quality facilities mm -hmm. that have been inspected by the FDA, that have been inspected by the European Union, depending where their factory is, that meet Health Canada standards, so that you know that you are getting something that is good enough for someone who has gone through a very very intense medical experience. It's the exact same quality. So that's like our gold seal, Transform, Amalux. Those brands are designed with that science that comes from those post mastectomy companies, but tailored for your body specifically. Um, but you get that peace of mind of getting something that is quality. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, brands like Divine Collection, Custom Skin, they're like your your movie special effects prosthetics that we were just talking about mm -hmm. where it's more of a handcrafted beautiful experience equally as high quality equally as an intensive in terms of um making sure that it looks good mm -hmm. but um definitely more of a visual experience rather than that medical background where the breast form store started with mm -hmm. and then sophia here um, can I use liquid latex to make a smooth transition between the breast forms and my skin to make it less noticeable? 
So, here's the thing. <laughs> um, liquid latex is a challenge. Um, first of all, if you have a latex allergy, don't do it. <laughs> uh, that's a big no. Um, I have seen liquid latex used with breast forms before. Um, it's not the most beautiful thing. It is something that can look a little chunky, um, even if you're really good with it. I've, I have seen girls that have like their makeup artist certifications with a special effects background use it with the medical style breast forms. It's not super pretty. It really isn't. Um, it, it's not ideal. Um, it isn't something that would be covered under warranty or anything like that because it is something that the breast forms were not designed for that original purpose. So to that extent, um, just be cautious because it's not something, if something goes wrong, your warranty won't cover it. Um, and in fact, in some cases, it might even make your warranty void. Um, for something like Divine Collection with Aphrodite or Gold Seal with the custom skin, anything that's got a silicone skin, that la liquid latex doesn't actually stick to it in our experiments. Um, so it's not going to do anything. <laughs> um, that one, something like Divine Collection, Aphrodite, Athena, it gets so thin. I'm talking like millimeters, a couple sheets of paper thin at the edges um, that you just be adding more bulkiness. Um, it's already thin enough. You really don't need to thin, try and thin it out further. Um, so to that point, I'd say it's not really worth it. Um, yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a challenge in that <laughs> one. Um, I would love to say that isn't this a great solution, but I've never been able to either duplicate it or see it done well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, yeah, and actually, since we just touched on that, um, experiments and testing and product testing, uh, the Brass Form store is really serious about product testing. Mm -hmm. um, so Haley's only been here for almost a year now, so she hasn't had the full gamut of product <laughs> testing just yet, but you, you have seen some of it. Yes. Um, whenever we add anything new to the website, it goes through a full gamut of product fitting. Um, we adhesive testing like we go through and experiment with everything we go through and custom fit every bra fitting chart to make sure it's accurate um, we go through to make sure it looks good on different bodies and things like that so we're really really picky about that so that we know that everything we offer fits properly and fits well um, there have been many things we've brought in over my time here that have been absolute flops where the product doesn't fit as described or the sizing is completely wrong or it just doesn't look good. Um, so we go through and we do all of that testing in advance uh, to make sure that whatever we offer is really like top tier. Mm -hmm. um, and if we don't have an answer, we do our best to go and find that answer. Um, so if you ask about a certain product, we'll go and find that answer type thing to find out if that's something that can be done or if that product exists or if it works well uh, because we want to make sure again that we're we're here to make sure that you look beautiful that you feel beautiful and that you have the best experience in fam that you can mm -hmm. yeah all right ladies any other questions uh -huh. I mean, we covered, we covered even more than I thought we were going to. So. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just trying to think, is there anything specific um, that we haven't touched on or wanted to touch base on? If you have any questions, drop them in the chat before we end here. Um, no. So... <laughs> I guess one of the things we should mention is because as we keep talking about like experimenting with different products, trying things on and things like that, and doing all these bra fitting and taking, taking the signs into bra fitting and bringing it to the assigned male at birth body and everything like that is um, a common question that comes up is, can I shop in person or can <laughs> I do a fitting? Um, before COVID, the Breast Form store has offered in-person fittings at our office in Delta, just outside of Vancouver in Canada. Um, we will be bringing that back in the near future. 
Um, we don't have an estimated date just yet as we over over time in COVID, um, we actually transformed our fitting room into additional warehouse space. So once we get that rearranged and we have a warehouse, uh, a warehouse not in the fitting room and we have a fitting room again, we will be looking at bringing that back. Yes. Um, it is something that is that you have to pre-book your appointment. Mm -hmm. um, that is because Haley and I are the only two girls upstairs in the office answering your emails, answering your phone calls. Um, and we also have to keep in mind our shipping days. Mm -hmm. So what we actually do is we shut down the entire warehouse. So that when you are working one on one with one of us as an in person fitting, we make sure that no one's interrupting and that we have a full access to everything that is in the warehouse. Mm -hmm. um, so it is something you have to book. Um, not sure what days that'll be in the future, but definitely keep an eye out on the website. We have a section called showroom, mm -hmm. and that'll be once we have fittings available again, that'll be where you'll be able to book them. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. all right. Um, Anything else? Oh. No, no. I think, I think we're good. <laughs> Every time we do a video, it ends up way longer than we intended. <laughs> That's usually how it goes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, it just as a recap, um, we were talking about certifications for um, breast form fitting and why we do it, how it comes around. Uh, we talked a little bit about Aphrodite and Jolie and breast form care. Um, as questions have come up, mm -hmm. we are currently running a sale on Divine Collection products, which mm -hmm. is what we were talking about, funnily <laughs> enough. Um, so there are a bunch of products that are available in limited stock from Aphrodite, Athena Breastplates, Jolie's and Nikki's. Um, those are all on sale right now while supplies last mm -hmm. and it's a pretty significant discount. It's a couple hundred bucks for sure off the breast forms. It's half price on the hip and hip and booty pads. So it's a really good deal. Those uh, are this, um, next to perfect. Right? The next to perfect. Yeah. That couple, uh, last week we actually did an Instagram live where we tried to show the flaws. I couldn't find them, <laughs> so that's a really fun video. Yeah. Um, Sam cuts out help halfway through. We had some technical issues, mm -hmm. but um, <laughs> and we are actually in the process of taking these Instagram lives, and we will be adding them to the YouTube channel as well. So you'll be able to recap this. Um, we'll probably break it up into smaller chunks so you can learn a little bit more that way. Mm -hmm. um, so if you missed anything. It'll be in our Instagram feed as well as it will end up on YouTube, so you'll be able to see it there as well. Mm -hmm. um, if you have questions, you can always send us a DM, send us an email. Um, that's what we're here for, is to answer anything that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we're, we're open Monday to Friday, 8 to 4 Pacific, which is 11 to 7 Eastern, um, Monday to Friday. So. And we've got a toll-free number, so feel free to give us a call, and we'd be happy to find the right size for you. Mm -hmm. Yes, we will. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so have a lovely day, and we'll we'll talk with you later. Yes, we will. Our we will be doing more of these. We yeah. love Between Two Boobs. It's a wonderful segment. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun, because we yeah. do get to chat a little bit more, mm -hmm. and answer some of the same questions that mm -hmm. are really, really common, so that we can get get you girls getting the right information that you need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So let's end this and we'll have to come to camera to do so. Yep. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs>